So I'm, I'm getting 14, 14 fourteenths. That doesn't work. 14 fifteenths. Did you get 14 fifteenths as well? Yeah. So our first expression is x to the 14 fifteenths. That's our first term. Minus. We're also going to do the 3 fifths plus 2. I'll erase my scratch paper here. So 3 fifths plus 2. I know that 2 is 10 fifths. So I'm going to get 13 fifths. By a show of hands, some people got exactly that on the paper. Good, all right, all right. Make sure your fraction work is up to par. Again, this is not fraction class, right? We're way beyond that. We're two classes beyond this stuff. But if you need help on fractions, please, by all means, come and see me. I will help you if you're struggling with this stuff, okay? I can't spend the time to teach you here. We're, we're two classes beyond that. But I will spend some time on, on, on your own time to, to help you with that if you struggle with fractions. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> moving on. How do I combine these things? How do I combine those? How do I combine those? You oh. <laughs> they have to have the same exact variable to the same power. Look at look at the board right now. Even if I did this, could I combine those? No. Even though they would have a common denominator, they're not exactly the same. There's no way to make them exactly the same. You can't do it. You're done. It's kind of nice, right? Done. Don't have to go any further. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to that one. We have the same process. We are distributing. We have a FOIL situation, as a matter of fact. Two terms times two terms. We're going to do the same process we did over here on our last example. We distribute, which means we multiply term by term, just making sure that we're writing out those steps, because I don't want you to miss anything. I don't want you to do this in your head, because that's when those mistakes happen. So if x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. Next up, we're going to have minus, because we have this minus. 2x to the 1 half plus 6x to the 1 half. And then lastly, we'll get a minus 12. Did you make it that far? Good. That's partial credit right there. That, at least you understand the distribution process, and you've written out the steps. Yes. Do we have to write it out like that on the test? Please. I, I want to see those steps. Right now, we're, we're learning it, right? Later on, when we pass this chapter, no, I don't care. But for right now, yeah, I want to make sure that you guys are getting this. Uh, the reason is, if for some reason you go directly to here, a lot of people are going to give me this on the test. They're going to give me x to the 1 fourth. Guarantee that ha this happens every year. I give the same exact problem in the test. People will always give me x to one fourth. Guaranteed. So if you go directly from here to here, I know you don't know what you're doing at all. I'm going to give you zero credit. But if you go from here to here to here, I know at least you knew distribution will give you like two or three points. Does that make sense? So I, I need to see that. Okay, so we're back to this thing. We have x to the one half times x to the one half. Do we add, subtract, multiply, or divide those things? Okay. So we're going to get x to the 1 half plus 1 half. I'll put an extra step up there so you see what's going on. Let's leave the other stuff for just a second. x to the 1 half plus 1 half. How much is 1 half plus 1 half? One. We're going to get 1. Yeah, not 1 fourth. Just x. Interesting, isn't it? x. Mine. Can you combine these things? Yeah. We have negative 2 x to the 1 half. We have 6 x to the 1 half. Those are the same variable to the same power. Those we can combine. You're going to get, it looks like positive 4, but it's x to what power? 1 half. So that doesn't change. No. So this is not going to give me 1. I need you to look up here, here at the board real quick. Understand something. If you got x to the first out of this, then what you're saying to me is that multiplying common bases is exactly the same as adding like terms. And they're not. Multiplication is not the same as addition. Therefore, you can't possibly get the same thing if you multiply or add. I know, I know some of you are saying, well, 2 times 2 is the same as 2 plus 2. Yes, it is. You were right. But not in this case, okay? So, yeah, we get 4 for sure. We get x to the, it's still 1 half, though. When you combine like terms, you don't change the exponent. Minus 12. Can you go any further? No. Yeah, you can simplify the x. Okay, you can if I want a radical form, but I mean combine any more like terms at all. Mm -hmm. uh, then that's it. You're, you're done on that problem. Raise your hand if you feel okay with this so far. Now, there's an F word on the board. You think you're getting an F word on Mondays, right? <laughs> We're going to learn how to factor using these radical ex or rational exponents. Now, I'm going to do this kind of slowly. I want to make sure you really get this. We're going to do it step by step, just like we're doing our distribution. Because uh, if you try to do this in your head, sometimes it gets a little bit messy uh, if you're really not paying attention to what's going on. What we're going to do is we're going to try to factor 
x to the negative one-third from, now this is kind of nice about factoring as I give you what you're supposed to factor. From that. Factor seven x or sorry, factor x to the negative one third from seven x to the negative one third minus five x to the five thirds. Oh my gosh, how are you supposed to factor fractions? That doesn't even make sense. What the heck? Well, I'm gonna draw some comparisons to something you do you should know how to factor already. Factor x squared from 3x squared minus 10x to the fifth. Firstly, I want you to recognize, can you factor x squared from that? Yes. Clearly. Now, I need you to understand also what factor means. What are we doing when you're factoring? Removing. Okay, removing. That sounds good. What are you doing when you're distributing? Okay. Well, we're not adding. We're, we're multiplying across those parentheses. That's what you do when you distribute, right? First thing times first thing, first thing, or outside thing times first thing, outside thing times second thing. Are you with me on this, folks? You are multiplying when you're distributing. Now understand that factoring is the opposite of distribution, right? Instead of multiplying in, what are we doing when we factor? We're dividing. We're dividing. We're dividing here. So what you do when you factor, here's how this works. You're going to understand this because you've done this problem before. What you would factor would be the x squared, and you'd say, x squared goes out here and I create parentheses. Now you have your show again. That's how you factor, right? You put whatever you're factoring out front. Put whatever you're factoring out front. We're factoring out. I even tell you, factor out x squared. You put that up front. Now how you get the stuff in here is you take the term and you divide by what you're factoring. Right? That's how you learned at the beginning of this class. You go, oh, okay, what I'm supposed to do is take 3x squared divided by x squared. I'm dividing out x squared. Can you tell me what's going to go right here? Now that should be very old news for us. You should not be learning right now, right? This is just review. This is three. If you are learning, well, okay, learn real fast. Next up, you'd have well, whatever this term is, and this term happens when you take my ten x to the fifth, or as a matter of fact, negative ten x to the fifth. Take the sign with it, divided by x squared. You see, factor means division, and we're dividing out piece by piece. What happens when I have negative ten x to the fifth divided by x squared? What happens to those exponents? Oh, you do subtract. Remember that? x to the fifth over x squared, you take the 5 minus 2, you get 3. Some people do that. What are you doing when you do that? Well, you're, you're matching up numbers, but really you're subtracting. Negative 10x to the third is what you, what you get. That whole thing is gone. And so you put minus 10x to the third. Raise your hand if you understand how we got all that stuff. And you can check it with distribution, right? 3x squared minus 10x to the fifth, that would be this exact thing. We're going to do precisely the same thing here. Only this time it's a little bit easier, because firstly we have excellent rules. Secondly, I tell you what to factor. That's kind of cool. So check it out. If we're going to factor out x to the negative one-third, just like we factored out x squared, when I write my parentheses, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. When I write my parentheses, can you all tell me what, what's going to go on the outside of my parentheses, please? X to the negative one-third. Good. Just like we did here. What you factor out goes on the outside. That's why you, it's called factor out, right? You're factoring out of your expression. Now, on the inside of our expression here, what we do is we do this piece by piece. Don't ignore this step. Don't try to do it in your head because otherwise it gets kind of difficult. We're going to do the same thing that I showed you right here. As a matter of fact, we're going to take for our first term, We're going to take 7x to the negative one-third divided by x to the negative one-third. You're taking your first term, you're dividing by what you factored out because that's what factoring means. Let's look at that. What happens when you have 7x to the one-third over x to the one-third? How much are you going to get out of this? Whatever, when you have something over itself, it, it crosses out, right? 
But I want you to think of the, the rule here. Let's listen to my voice, watch on the board here real quick. When you have an x uh, common base over a common base, what do you do with those exponents? You add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Subtract. You do subtract, don't you? Yeah. You go, oh, look at it. This would be x to the negative one-third minus negative one-third. Where are all those negatives coming from? That's negative one-third. You're subtracting exponents because they're on top of one another. Minus one-third. What's this minus a negative do? Negative one-third plus one-third. This is x to the zero. Negative one-third plus one-third is zero. That means you would have just a seven. Or if you want to do it here, those things are gone. Yeah. You get just a seven. Yeah. You get seven. Hey, does that work if you distribute it? Yeah. Let's try it. If you distribute x to the negative one third, what are you going to get? Oh, look, seven x to the negative one third. That's cool. That works. How many people are with me on the first part? People in the middle, are you guys okay with this or no? Yeah, okay. Now for the next one, we're going to do the same exact thing with our second term. We're going to have negative 5x to the 5 thirds over x to the negative 1 third. We take the term, we divide by what you're factoring. Hey, tell me something. This one's not going to be as easy as the first one because that matched up perfectly. But it's going to be the same idea as what I showed you down here. So. What do you do when you have common bases being divided? Do you add, subtract, multiply, or divide, folks? So hopefully you see that you're definitely going to have a negative 5. You all see that, right? We are going to have x. What comes first, 5 thirds or negative 1 third? 5 thirds. And you said we subtract, right? What are we subtracting? Negative 1 third. We're not subtracting 1 third. We're subtracting negative 1 third. You see the difference? Negative one third. Tell me, what happens when you subtract a negative? Do you add or do you subtract still? Yeah. So you get negative five x to the six thirds. That's six thirds. Or two. And you can simplify fractions if it's an exponent, just like regular fractions. We get negative five x squared. That is what's going right there. Minus five x squared. It's very similar to this process. We took the first term divided by what we're factoring. Second term divided by what we're factoring. That's what's going in these places. I'm going to erase this so it doesn't look as confusing here. Why you didn't cancel the x's on that one? When, you are when you're dealing with exponents, you subtract those exponents if you're dividing. And that's exactly what we're doing. The only reason why we canceled those x's here is because you're subtracting those exponents. Negative one third minus negative one third is zero. X to the zero power is one. That's why you can cross them out. It's the whole reason why you can cancel your, your exponents here. Here they don't match up exactly. You can't do that. How many people understood that example and understand that this is our final answer? X to the negative one third times seven minus. Okay, good. Try one on your own. Give you, we have to factor it also, or you have to find out by yourself. 